I made a video not too long ago discussing the problem of counter swapping in Overwatch 2 and how a lot of the balance issues are too heavily swayed in front of cheese characters that just like to entirely counter swap the tank, the DPS, the support, and make your life entirely miserable. Why is this such a big problem? I discussed a lot of that in the video, and I also discussed the merits of when counter swapping may or may not be a little bit overrated. But today I want to answer the question of when should you actually swap? When is it a good time to actually swap off the character, and when is it a time that you just need to learn how to adjust your playstyle or learn how to play versus the matchup a little bit better? And today I want to introduce you to the rule of 3.5. So the rule of 3.5 is as follows. If you're playing into a hard counter, that's two points. If you're playing on a bad map for your character, that's 1.5 points. And if you're playing into a soft counter, that's only one point. And anytime that you find yourself adding up those results and you end up with 3.5 or more, you should consider swapping. Now, obviously, there's a lot of context that matters to this. Obviously, it depends on your mentality. It depends on your knowledge of the map or the matchup. If you're inexperienced, consider getting good, obviously, but I think it depends a lot on the situation. It depends on your synergy with your team as well. Although this is overrated and very hard to read, I do think that that is something that if you're able to feel like you have a good grasp of whether I work well with this character or I don't work well with this character, that's something that you should be taking into account. Although in my experience, people's ability to read synergy with their teammates, picks is usually vastly, vastly overrated. So just keep that in mind. And I guess finally, it also depends on the status of your ultimate. We'll go over the hard and soft counters, but before we do that, I want to talk about the map choices here. So I actually have just have a quick quick play game, a replay code that I pulled up earlier. And you could probably guess, if I ask you the question, uh, is this a good Widowmaker map? Short sight lines, not a lot of space, not a lot of long angles, the answer is no. If then I then flip the script and I move to like, let's say a map like Circuit Royale, and I ask you, is this a good Lucio match if we're playing spam? Do I really wanna play Lucio in a wide open map like this? Uh, and the answer is probably gonna be no as well. So I understand that reading the map can be a very difficult, very tricky thing to do if you don't quite have the experience. So if you're not quite sure, then the answer is probably it's okay to play the character. If the character feels terrible to play because the sightlines are too long or the sightlines are too narrow, then the answer is probably not a great map for that character, and that gets the 1.5 result. If you have any questions about what are good or bad maps, you can feel free to let me know in the comments. Now, finally, let's talk about hard and soft counters. What classifies as a hard counter and what classifies as a soft counter? I classify a hard counter in this video as something that demands a major playstyle adjustment. Totally adjust how you approach the match entirely, and you're honestly operating at a disadvantage with the character that you're picking. You can play it, you can find success with it, you can win the game easily with it, but one hard counter will make your life kind of miserable. Soft counters, however, are just simple playstyle adjustments. Not anything super major, but definitely demands a little bit of a playstyle adjustment, some minor adjustments specifically in how you position and how you play. Obviously, everything that's in this list is subject to change. Uh, it's also very subjective. Obviously, I have experience as a coach for a long time, but I'm very open to the fact that I could have made many mistakes in this list. So please let me know in the comments if you think I missed any particular matchups. Obviously, this tier list is assuming that both players are equally skilled. Some of the matchups in this are really skill-based, even the soft counters, where it could really go either way depending on how good the person is. But assuming that both players are equally skilled, the hard counter is more often than not going to be very difficult for the person being countered. More than likely, the person being soft countered is going to have a slight advantage in that matchup. Um, basically, I also wanted to aim for around the mid-rank experience, the gold, plat, uh, diamond level. Obviously, Hanzo versus Torbjorn is more of a hard counter for the Torbjorn. He struggles to play versus Hanzo, but if you're playing in bronze, the Torbjorn isn't exactly getting hard countered by Hanzo pick. So just something to keep in mind. Finally, and this should be the last point before we actually get started, understanding getting value and the feeling of getting value and understanding that those are different things is really, really important. For example, Reinhardt versus Orisa. I have Orisa as classified as a soft counter into Reinhardt, even though it feels like a hard counter because it's actually very easy to get consistent good value from the Orisa. She bleeds damage. She gets her cooldowns forced quite easily, and she doesn't consistently kill you if you play your cards right. And so while it might feel really bad for the Reinhardt and not a lot of fun, uh, it, you do get a lot of value. It just doesn't always feel like you do. So that kind of falls into the direct versus indirect value. And there's a couple, uh, there's actually many more examples of that in this video. Uh, so let's take a look here. So really, really important disclaimer. One more, I promise. I'm editing this video and I really need to put something out here. There's a couple of characters like Zarya and Ash, uh, even Torbjorn, for example, that have like a ton of soft counters. And I realize it's very easy to get to that 3.5 rule on situations when you actually shouldn't swap. For example, if I'm playing Zarya on Li Jing Tower Control Center, really small map, uh, and they're on like Hanzo Ash, oh no, two soft counters I need to swap. Well, no, not really, because that map is freaking good for you. It's, it's not very good for those characters. So I think what you need to consider when you're considering whether a character is a soft counter or not is whether the character is playing on a good map. For example, if I'm playing Hanzo versus, on Junkertown 
yeah, that's going to be hard to play Zarya into that for 100%. It's going to be hard to reach him. It's going to be hard to touch him. Same thing goes for Widowmaker and so on. But if I'm playing Zarya on a good map, I almost feel like there needs to be a calculation that you need to include where you actually subtract counters, where they don't actually count as counters. Or actually, you get plus one to where you actually are able to play more into your counters because the map is favorable for you. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys to use your discretion. But again, don't just use the calculation if you are also playing in a map that is good for you or bad for your counters. If I'm playing Ash on Junkertown and they go ball tracer, yeah, it might be hard. But if I'm on like first point or third point, it's also pretty hard for the ball tracer to consistently get to me if I'm positioned well, or at least it's harder. So it's not as hard of a counter as it would be in other circumstances. So again, use your discretion. Um, I think anything that's formulaic, do this to swap or know when to swap here is going to be inherently difficult. So you're definitely going to have to use your discretion when it comes to this. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so starting in no particular order, we're just going to start with the tanks here, and we're going to be starting with Wrecking Ball. So no particular hard counters. I know that might surprise some people, but I think Wrecking Ball has ways of counterplaying pretty much every single crowd control ability in the game. I find Brigitte's Whip Shot, Shield Bash, and Rally to be extremely difficult. Whip Shot specifically is something that requires a lot of counterplay. Hack as well is more of a soft counter as well, especially with how long it lasts. It doesn't last as long as it used to be. Overwatch 1 Summer was definitely a hard counter, not so much in Overwatch 2. Uh, and there's also ways of actually chasing down and killing the Sombra now. Uh, Bastion is more of a soft counter in terms of if he saves your turret form for your engage, he can't quite punish you as hard as he can a Winston because in tech theory, you can get away and mines can kind of ruin a Bastion's day. However, it's so easy to just chunk a huge portion of Ball's uh, HP upon engaging. That's really tough to deal with. Sleep Dart and Aid, um, specifically Sleep Dart, are definitely skill plays that you can outplay, but they are tricky to outplay. Uh, and so that's, I think that's always going to be something that's worth factoring in. You can kill on it, and you can also kill Zenyatta, but again, it's one of those counterplay situations where if you mess up versus Zenyatta, Discord and damage will ruin your day. Uh, and with the 225 HP, he's actually a little bit harder to kill. Now, I will say the Discord changes have definitely favored this matchup uh, for the Wrecking Ball because while Zenyatta is a little bit harder to kill, he can't just spam Discord on you indiscriminately. It does be put on cooldown. May is an interesting one, where May is I would not classify a hard counter because she can't really freeze you, but the slow really can kill your momentum, and it's not exactly something that you can ever kill, so that's definitely annoying. Um, I think you could argue that May would fall more to the annoying category, maybe not exactly a soft counter, but we threw in here. Cassidy, decent damage, fan the hammer, um, and then obviously Hinder is a big, big deal for Wrecking Ball. Just being pulled out of your ball form is a huge, huge deal, and then obviously being slowed is really, really tough. And he does a pretty good amount of damage to you even when you're in ball form. And Roadhog, obvious example, Roadhog does a lot of damage versus you. Um, he has Shotgun, does a lot of damage. The slow is difficult. I think, obviously, there's a lot of ways to avoid Roadhog, uh, but it does make it difficult when he does hit those abilities on you. So we'll move on to the next character. So Doomfist. Doomfist is another one similar to Wrecking Ball, where a lot of the characters with mobility are countered by crowd control. But as long as those characters' mobility have skill expression, there's ways of avoiding and counterplaying that crowd control. So similar to Wrecking Ball, there's a lot of things that we can check off the box here. Um, obviously, Sleep Dart is one of them that we're worried about. Hinder is one of them that we're worried about. Discord, Hack, uh, and even things like Brigitte. But all these characters are characters that you can outplay and you can kill if they make a mistake. Brig, Cass, in, and Ana are all very squishy characters that are very killable by Doomfist, especially when you have Empowered Punch. But if you make a mistake, they will kill you, which is why I classify them as soft, uh, soft counters. Uh, now, there's a couple other characters that fall into that category as well. I mean, obviously, Roadhawk and CC as well. It's not a big surprise there. But you're noticing a few characters that don't exactly fit the list here. And these are what I would call as playstyle counters, not exactly crowd control counters. In other words, an Echo is not something that can really you can really touch at all, and she can definitely hurt you. Um, she doesn't crowd control you, she doesn't one-shot you, but she can't really do a lot to an Echo, and that makes her and what, what I would describe as a soft counter. And the same thing also applies to Farah, same thing also applies to Tracer, and to an extent, the same thing also applies to Kiriko, where they can all do pretty decent damage to you, but they're really hard for you to consistently kill and even force good cooldowns on. Now, you can chase down a Kiriko and force TP and sometimes force Suzu, um, but she can poke you out very consistently, and she can also quite a, uh, consistently avoid you. And these are all characters that you can't really consistently touch, but they can all pretty consistently smoke you up just a little bit, so keep that in mind. D is somewhere in between where she can peel off your engages, but kind of like the others, she does a really, really good amount of damage onto you as well, uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Let's move on to the next character. So Diva is one of those characters where I actually find that the counters are few and far between. There's a lot of ways that she can out brawl some of the dive tanks. There's a lot of ways that she can out dive some of the brawl tanks. She can generally avoid a lot of her worst matchups. However, the reason she's not always meta is because she's not always peak. She's not always the best character for the best pick at the best time. But overall, she's a pretty diverse character. So at least you got going for that. 
Um, now, I will say that obviously Zarya, May, Brigitte are going to be diff tricky characters to play into. Um, Zarya is what people would classify as a hard counter for D.Va in low ranks, but in mid ranks, once you start to utilize your mobility and avoid the tank trade and look to avoid the Zarya by going around her, taking different off angles, um, then you're going to start having fewer problems into Zarya. Thank you. Um, May is another one of those where she can be very difficult to deal with because her freeze slow is a big, big deal for D.Va, uh, and the DPS is obviously pretty oppressive as well. But again, it's kind of similar to Zarya, where if you don't have to worry as much about May by avoiding her, then she's a lot less of an issue. The one example that May has over Zarya, though, is that she has a little bit more mobility with how she can reposition with Wall, but overall, not a huge deal. You can also eat her ultimate, and you can also eat Zarya's ultimate, too. Brigitte is actually a tricky one, something that took a little bit of time for us to come up with, because Brigitte does a really good job at denying your dive value and does so consistently. Uh, she can consistently whip shot and proc or inspire off of you. She can deny your dives. And really one armor pack alone is often enough to shut down a diva diving and killing somebody uh, just from the 25 burst HP. So it's not one of those matchups that you feel like I can't play the video game like you versus Azaria, um, but she does a great job of denying your value. So even though it feels like, hey, Brig doesn't feel too bad to play into, you might not even realize how much of the value that she's denying on you. So I think it's definitely a tough matchup, especially against a good Brig. So Junker Queen's an interesting one. I think one of the things I noticed with tanks is that characters without damage mitigation struggle with CC. Characters without mobility struggle versus range. And characters that don't really have good shields, don't have good mobility, struggle with both. And I think Junker Queen, even though she does have her speed, she has a little bit of poke. She does have a really uh, hard time versus some characters. I think May is obviously one where a May wall, even if there isn't a lot of follow-up, can cost you a lot of HP. Uh, she can poke you down. She can freeze you easily with Blizzard. Uh, and it's hard for you to consistently kill her with Ice Block. I think Kiriko is one of those characters that can avoid you entirely and then obviously ruin your entire ultimate with Suzu, which sucks. Uh, Ana is one of those characters where really both of her abilities are a problem for you. Even if you can kill her, she can do a lot of threat to you. Uh, and unlike some of the Dive Kings, you don't have as much ways of outplaying her abilities. Farah, uh, and we're going to talk about a couple of the characters. Farah, Widow, Ash, Hanzo to an extent as well, and even Zenyatta are all characters that if they position really, really well, they can co almost completely outrange you uh, to where you can't really interact with them at all, and they all have ways of putting out a world of hurt on you. And unlike some of the other dive characters, you can't really close the distance as consistently with them. More of a map-specific thing, but on good maps for Widows and Hanzos and Zenyatta's, Jugger Queen is a ridiculously hard character to play into those. And then on the brawl side of things, uh, Lucio can deny a lot of your engages with Boop. Reaper is a character that's not as scared of you up front. More of a skill matchup, but he can ruin your day. And then I think in terms of Brawl tanks, I think Reinhardt and Zarya just generally do a more consistent job of burning you down. Uh, a high charge Zarya, a Reinhardt that's managing his HP well, and that has Shatter, by the way, can really, really, really mess up a Junker Queen. Junker Queen is one of those fun characters, but can deal, uh, can struggle with dealing with some of her counters. Orisa. Now, Orisa is an interesting one where her character is not super hard to play, so she finds ways to get value even into, or at least feels like she's getting value, but she actually has a lot of counters, a lot of things that she struggles into. Similar to Junker Queen, a lot of the more ranged characters, uh, like the Widow, the Hanzo, the, the Ash, uh, the Farah, she can't really touch those characters. Um, and she doesn't, while she does have the Javelin spin, it's like an even worse version of Shout for Junker Queen. So she has no real way of consistently closing the distance on DPS or squishies. Uh, there's another thing as well, like where we talk about consistent brawl matchup, where generally the Sigma and Zarya are going to do a much, much better job of brawling with it. The Zarya in particular, uh, Orisa can close the distance on Sigma if she plays it really, really smart, and she could do pretty well in the 1v1 up close. But Zarya beats you at mid-range, Zarya beats you at long range, and Zarya beats you in close range if she's managing her bubbles properly. Um, and because you don't have mobility, it's really hard for you to get around the Zarya, which is why I find Zarya to be probably Orisa's hardest matchup. Zenyatta falls into the spam category, um, but Discord also is a big, big, big problem because Discord can actually kill, it's like one of the only things that can actually kill you through Fortify, uh, so keep that one in mind as well. And finally, Kiriko, uh, she can Suzu your ultimate and she just completely avoids you like the rest of the DPS. It's not really a character that you can ever close the distance on. And Kiriko does a surprising amount of damage hitting headshots in you. You're actually extremely easy to headshot. So um, Kiriko can either avoid you when she wants to, she can ruin your ultimate when she wants to, or she can just shoot you in the head when she wants to. And it's really actually hard to get close the distance and secure kills with her. Ramatra's an interesting one. Uh, his shield is in such a long cooldown that he has the typical struggles versus range spam. Characters like Ana uh, and Zenyatta. And I guess you could also argue that Hanzo can be a bit of an issue. But one thing that Ramatra does have is he does have the Nemesis form. So if you don't burst him down quickly, he does have that speed boost in the Nemesis form, which allows him to deal with some spam characters easily. 
Um, even things like Widowmaker are not as bad to deal with because of his uh, Omnic form range. It's something that you can poke out a little bit. But I do struggle versus the Discord. I do struggle versus the Sleep Dart and Nade for obvious reasons. Being forced to block quickly because you've been Discorded or spammed or naded is almost a, not just a death sentence, but it means that you're not going to be able to get value out of your Nemesis form, which is a big deal. Uh, moving on down the line, we're going to talk about some of the other characters that he can't really range. Obviously, Sojourn is a big one. Sojourn's the difference between Sojourn and the other spam characters is that you can't really close the distance on her because she'll just slide away. Same thing kind of applies to both the Far and Echo, where they can put a lot of pressure on you and you can't really do anything to them. Tracer, just nuisance. You can't do anything versus her. She can do stuff to you. Life River can deny a lot of value. Again, not a character that you can consistently reach, and he can pull a lot of uh, your threats away. Same thing with Mercy. Anything that's damage boosted as Mercy on an off angle can be a really, really difficult to deal with. It's not Mercy herself. It's what she enables that's difficult. And Bash is an interesting one. I actually think we got to see a little bit of Bash in, in the Overwatch League Grand Finals meta, and people were trying to play Ramatra and to bash and uh, I think Boston tried it once and it just it doesn't work because you pull out um, and you start to push and the second the bash goes turf form you immediately have to block and that's not a very good favorable cooldown cycle for Ramatra he takes way too much damage and unlike Sigma even unlike Reinhardt he can't do fire strikes he can't pin he doesn't do the damage uh, with the punches fast enough it doesn't do enough DPS to actually threaten the Bastion so the Bastion just sits there pops turret form and, and the Ramatra generally dies so I think Bastion's an, an actually a pretty difficult matchup for Ramatra he wanted to Reinhardt here. Similar examples as before. It's what he can't touch, specifically the Farah. I think Echo can fall into this list as well, but generally it would be saying Echo with a Mercy Pocket. You don't always see Echo with a Mercy Pocket, so it's not as bad for Reinhardt. But yeah, Farah is definitely something that you just can't touch. Same thing goes with Kiriko. And to an extent, the same thing I think also goes with Life Hoover, with a character that not only can you not consistently touch, but can also ruin a lot of your plays. Pedal is a huge thing to deal with him. It means you can't get to him. Uh, and then life grip means that you really can't solo shatter anybody, which is a large one of the reasons why you're going to be using your shatter. It's just a solo shatter. In terms of brawl characters, Bastion is a total nuisance to deal with. Not a hard counter. It's not as bad as running like a Winston, um, but it's really, really difficult to deal with. You almost need to save shatter for him. You almost need to save charge for him. Um, and then obviously things like Roadhog and Arisa, while they're not total hard counters, they're very difficult to play with on the front line. Uh, the slow is difficult, Roadhog's damage is difficult, Whole Hog is difficult, Javelin, Javelin Spin, Fortify, all of these things do a good job of making Reinhardt kind of miserable. The only thing that Reinhardt has over them is the ability to pin away and use his mobility, um, but on some maps that can be actually kind of difficult to do. That's why I classify them as soft counters, not hard, but they're still annoying. Roadhog. Now, Roadhog is an interesting one. So the rework that really didn't change much of anything at all. He struggles with the same stuff that he did in the previous iterations. Ana is a hard counter. Sleep, Dart, and Nade are still very, very difficult to deal with. Now, the vape change did help with that a little bit so that you don't have to worry about, oh no, my vape's going to get canceled. You'll have it almost immediately afterwards. But he still struggles immensely with this character. Um, he's just a big, fat guy. Very easy to shoot. Very easy to sleep. Very easy to nade. And Ana will remain a hard counter to Roadhog. Uh, Zenyatta, I would say, is a Discord uh, something that's very, very easy to land on a Roadhog, very easy to hit shots on a Roadhog. And a lot of times the way he's positioning, if he's positioning smartly, is just outside of your range. Um, so it makes it difficult for you to consistently range him. Diva does a good job melting you. Um, Diva can also matrix your shots. Uh, so there's not a whole, of, whole lot of new information there. Hanzo and Sojourn kind of fall into the same category where, again, like Zenyatta, a lot of range pressure on you. And again, not targets that you consistently kill. Um, now, the reason that you don't see Ash on here, although we considered it, is because I think Roadhog does a pretty good job of consistently burning Bob. Um, so that's something that we definitely took into account. There's some of the uh, ult matchups that definitely factor into here, uh, but Ash does fairly well with the Roadhog as well. The only problem, though, is that Ash ends up having to use a lot of ammo on Roadhog, which can be kind of expensive mid-fight, but Hans and Sojourn don't care. Sojourn just builds a rail. <laughs> Hanzo just builds ult instantly uh, and forces your resources. And again, characters that play usually a little bit outside of your effective range. Sigma and Orisa are kind of in similar categories where they do a really good job spamming you like the other characters, but not really being characters that you can consistently kill. Javelin, Sigma Shield, Sigma Rock, Sigma Shift, Flux, Javelin. Even, even Orisa's ultimate can be difficult to deal with as a Roadhog. Um, and they generally just do a good job of marking. Now, there are ways of outplaying these tanks. Um, you can definitely outplay them, but it is a little bit tricky. So Sigma's an interesting one. He's actually very popular in the meta right now because a lot of the more popular quote-unquote counters to him aren't as strong. A lot of characters like, I would even say Tracer could arguably fit in here as well, but a lot of characters like Kiriko, like Sombra, like Echo, and to an extent, I guess, Tracer could few throw in here as well. You can just avoid him and go around him. That's Sigma's biggest weakness. Anything that's within reach, within spam, he does a pretty good job of beating 
Raw, hard, brawl comps, Ryan May, he can struggle a little bit into, but he does okay into those as well. Um, I would say that's why we have Ramatra and Ryan in here in terms of like smashing heads and we chew each other. The Ramatra and Ryan are going to do slightly better, um, but then he's also vulnerable to characters that go around him. Um, so Sombra, Kiriko, Echo, I think characters that he can't really poke out, characters that he can't really control uh, is definitely a bit of a problem with Sigma. Now, those characters aren't very strong right now, but if they do come back in the meta, do expect Sigma to fall out a little bit. So Winston's obviously a tough one. Winston's been one of those high skill characters that struggles with a lot of counters. I think when we talk about, again, about Winston counters, it's not just about what can poke him out at range. It's also characters that even if he closes the distance on, just beat him in the face. I think Bastion's a really difficult one uh, because he can consistently save his turret form for when you engage, completely melts your bubble, completely melts your HP, um, and not even something that you can consistently kill. And even when you primal rage, his primal uh, is something that you're easily able to melt. Uh, and then even just from staging, like Winston uh, is okay at outranging Bastion, kind of, sort of, but Bastion can consistently use his weapon and poke out your HP even when not in his turret form. So there's just nothing good about Bastion that feels, it just feels terrible all the time. And D.Va is definitely an interesting one. D.Va can consistently do a lot of damage to you up close and D.Va can consistently mark you. So unlike Bastion, D.Va is very mobile and no matter what way that you try to avoid her, she can set up and deny that engaged entirely. So D.Va is one of those counters where it's not just that she's difficult to deal with, but she can also deny your counterplay, which is trying to avoid her. She, she, it's really hard to avoid a D.Va. In terms of soft counters, characters that can consistently poke out Winston while also being difficult to, uh, to dive, Echo, uh, Zenyatta, I think Torbjorn, Cassidy are all characters that can poke you out at range and then also be very difficult to actually kill. I think Zenyatta is definitely falls into that category with Discord, can melt Primal, but also with the 225 HP and the kick, he can be a difficult character to kill even when you do land directly on him. Brigitte obviously denies your staging with Whipshot. Uh, Junger Queen could be something that if you actually accidentally mess up with her, she can kill you with her knife. She's able to pull you back out and then obviously obliterates you point blank range. And you're thinking about why are you at point blank range on a Junker Queen? Well, the difference is that with other tanks that if you mess up and get point blank range on, you can get out. Junker Queen, if she plays her cards right, she can actually deny you're getting out. Um, Roadhog is just ridiculous. Obviously, again, a tank that you're not really going to be spending a lot of time diving anyway because you don't really dive tanks, but... Roadhog's hook can really displace you in those short to medium ranges, even when you're trying to avoid him. And then whole hog totally obliterates you. Um, and then I think even moving on to something like Reaper, um, obviously Reaper is pretty easy to avoid, uh, but it is something that does deny certain spaces from how you engage. Uh, I think Reaper is probably the easiest of these counters actually to play around, especially in medium to high ranks, but it is a character that is difficult and it can be a character that can mess up you, mess you up if you mess up, let's put it that way. I will talk about Zarya. So Zarya is an interesting one. I actually find that she has a lot of counters, things that can out brawl her, things that can avoid her, things that can out spam her. Um, her bubbles do give her some viability, but I actually think Zarya is one of those characters that's pretty bad if the meta isn't good for her, if she's not feeling particularly strong. I do think Life Weaver is a pretty tough counter to deal with. His ability to pedal your grab, his ability to life grip your grab, his ability to heal up the targets that you're shooting is pretty consistently oppressive. Um, just completely shutting dra grab down consistently and not being a squishy that you can consistently kill because he plays too far away puts him into at least a hard counter for me. Um, yeah, definitely a hard counter for me. And in terms of soft counter, characters that can out brawl uh, Azari with some support, I think definitely Bastion, Reinhardt can all ruin uh, Azari. I think Maywall can be tough to deal with. Ramatra, I think, does a better job in the brawl as well. Uh, but I think even harder than that are dive characters that you completely avoid your value. For example, it might be something that you can peel off a Winston or peel off a Sombra, but a Wrecking Ball is hard to peel off because he comes in and comes out so fast that you can use one bubble now, he rolls away, and he comes right back again immediately afterwards. So a dive character like that, and honestly, Kiriko as well, can be really, really, really difficult. Again, a character that just totally avoids your impact, totally avoids um, and, and just goes around you entirely. And if it uses a bubble on a ball engage or a Kiriko engage, it can feel pretty bad because, again, they could just immediately come right back in again. And then even worse than that are the characters that you can't even touch. Characters that are spammier, ass, um, Ash, Hanzo, uh, Iliari, Widowmaker, and Echo, really all the flyers. I think Farah actually belongs in this category as well. I'm not sure why I forgot her, but Farah belongs in this category as well. Any character that you can't touch just feels absolutely terrible. Uh, and that's, that, that's the big thing with Zarya. It's like she's not the best Brawl character, but she's also not really good at spamming either. So anything that completely outspams her sojourn, uh, damage boosted, mercy, whatever, um, can feel pretty, pretty bad to play. So I actually think Winston falls in the dive category as well, where although his engages are not quite as unpredictable as a ball, for example, the ability to completely avoid you 
and then not shoot your bubbles to feed you charge when you do peel off the bubbles get actually pretty bad. Uh, so I think that's one of the things that makes Winston difficult to deal with. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a hard counter by any means, but it can be difficult to play with. So Ash is an interesting one. I think that she struggles versus some of the dive characters, Doomfist, Kiriko, Tracer, Sombra, Genji, Wrecking Ball, all can do a pretty good job of disrupting her and diving her and consistently killing her, or at least threatening the kill. I think Winston can be a little bit trickier. Winston can definitely kill her as well, but Coach Gun can kind of ruin his day. And it's also easier to poke out a Winston in staging than it is some of these other characters. Uh, I think Coach Gun's a little bit worse versus these other characters. Diva can dive you too, but Diva can also deny your, uh, your, your shots. She can deny your dynamite uh, and she can do all of these things while also not really risking her life. I think at Diva in some situations may even be a hard counter, so read into that as you will. I think the interesting thing about Ash as well is that she tends to struggle versus very, very heavy spam characters like Hanzo's, Sigma's, Widow's. Um, she's a good spam character, but she can lose to Hanzo very easily in a 1v1. She's a good sniper, but she can lose to Widow very easily in a 1v1. So it's more of a map situational thing. And I think Sigma does a really good job of shutting her value down as well. Cassie's an interesting one. I, I think the, the, the fall off change really hurt him a lot. So where he's not allowed to get a lot of damage done. Sigma and Diva do a great job shutting down his value. Sojourn is a better range character than he is. Uh, a Sojourn with Rail can be terrifying to deal with. Hanzo, Widow, Ash all consistently outrange you. Um, and they're not the characters that you can consistently threaten. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward with Cassidy. Characters that are out, able to outspam him generally beat him in the matchup. <clears throat> Echo is an interesting one. A hybrid between a flyer and a spam character. Uh, she can definitely get spotted out and ruined by a Sombra. A Sojourn with Rail can really, really ruin a, an Echo as well. And actually, Cassie does quite well versus Echo because as opposed to Farah, Echo tends to play a little bit closer, which is exactly in the Cassie's effective range and that 225 HP. Plus, that innate can definitely ruin your life. Ash can poke you out pretty easily. I think maybe not as consistently as Cassie, but consistently enough and can also threaten kills a lot faster. Diva can eat stickies. Diva can matrix your shots. Diva can threaten you. And actually, Iliare falls into that Cassie category where she can actually pretty consistently ruin your day by shooting you, but she's also almost impossible to kill at the same time. So I think Iliare is one of the best echo counters in the game. Genji's a funny one. So Genji, you guys might have a lot of issues with Torbs, might have issues with Symmetras, but there's ways of counterplaying all of those almost consistently. They're very annoying, but they're not exactly counters. Now, there's a few exceptions to that rule on this list. I think Moira catalogs as a soft counter because it's one of those matchups that really doesn't favor the Genji almost ever. So your best bet is just to avoid her and just deny her value and only take the engagement when you see an opportunity to. She's not something that's going to consistently deny your value entirely, but she's going to make your life kind of annoying. And she's also a support character that's just something that you can't consistently kill. So you prefer them to be on a support character that you'd prefer to, uh, to be able to kill. Uh, and I think that that's something that can be very difficult to play around. Uh, Farah, not a character that you can touch. Same thing kind of goes with Echo. Two characters that can shoot you, but you can't really shoot them. And then while Zarya, again, we talk about the tank line. This Usually you should be avoiding the tank line as Genji. But as opposed to some of the other tanks that you can occasionally farm, occasionally put some pressure on, Zara is never really a target that you can consistently farm. And she can also deny your engages by bubbling off backline. So not a hard counter by any means, but definitely can be pretty annoying to play around to. Genji is surprisingly not hard counterable, but there are a lot of things. And we had a list of what was annoying for Genji. And the list was a mile long. So you might find yourself being annoyed a lot, if not consistently hard countered a lot. Hanzo, not the strongest DPS, but just certainly one of the hardest to hard counter. Farah, no hit scan, can be very difficult to deal with, and he's very squishy, so he's very easy to dive. I think Genji uh, has the advantage in the 1v1, which is lower appropriate. Uh, and then obviously the two tanks that shut down his spam, but he's a relatively flexible DPS, at least in terms of the hard counter, soft counter value. Junkrat, obvious limitations of Junkrat, very limited range, very limited uh, mobility, which means that characters like Farah, obviously difficult to deal with, but the same thing also applies to any of the spam characters as such as these. And I actually think Baptiste does fairly well versus him. Doesn't get too close enough to die, and Lamp can be one of really the most consistent rip tire counter in the game because uh, it lasts long enough for you to be able to break it. It's not a consistent immediate invulnerability like a, uh, a sound barrier or a, a Suzu. A mortality field lasts long enough to be a consistent counter to Junkrat, as well as his ability to just freaking shoot the Riptire. Um, Diva, Sigma can eat the spam pretty easily and spam you out consistently. Uh, it's a characters that you actually have to respect their ability to actually kill you and not just deny your value. So yeah. May is an interesting one. I actually feel her relatively dynamic. Uh, some of you guys might be struggling versus a lot of the matchups, but if you learn how to adjust your play style around the mid ranks, she starts to shine. She's not always the best pick, but there's a lot of things that you could do with her character. You could take angles, take flanks, take 1v1s. She can uh, deny enemy tank value. Uh, so there's a lot of matchups that she feels maybe not the best in, but she feels good enough in. Far as a character that she has a hard time consistently shooting and shutting down value on. And then the same thing also applies to Kiriko with the added bonus that Kiriko can also shut down your ultimate, which really, really sucks. 
Farah is one of the most consistently countered heroes in the game, but she's also interesting in the fact that sometimes she counters her counters. Let me explain. You look at a character like Widowmaker, you look at a character like Soldier, you look at a character like Cassidy, and you get the idea here. All these hitscan characters, in theory, counter Farah, but they're also sometimes the easiest kills if Farah can close the distance or even better, get on top of those characters. So if you're playing on a bad map as Farah, it's going to be almost impossible for you to play around hitscan. If you're playing on a good map with Farah, it's going to be almost impossible for the hitscan to play around you. So I am going to be putting hitscan into this category here, uh, but keep in mind that this is a two-way street. It can, these can also be your easiest kills as well. Cassidy is generally Farah's best counter on shorter range sightline maps. Ash is great on mid-range. Sojourn is great when she has rail. Soldier is great when there's a lot of flanks available because it can be very cons- hard to consistently track. Uh, Widowmaker is obviously phenomenal in the more long-range sightline maps. Samra is actually pretty interesting because she can kill you if you get caught without a pocket. She can also sometimes kill your Mercy, but more often than not, she can actually kill the person that you're leaving behind. You see, if Farah has a Mercy pocket, there's a DPS in the support that is not getting healing. So characters like Wrecking Ball, Tracer, and Samra do a really good job killing the isolated DPS and killing support, even if they don't directly kill you. Echo is kind of somewhere in between. She's the non, she's the far counter that's not exactly a far counter. Um, the only thing that prevents Echo from being a hard counter is the fact that she doesn't quite have a consistent verticality to consistently chase you, and she can be kind of caught out in the open looking for you. So an Echo with a Mercy, definitely a hard counter. Echo without a Mercy, not so much. Uh, but she does pretty, pretty good versus you in the 1v1. Now, you guys probably can notice why uh, Batiste obviously hit scan support does fairly well, although he is killable. Uh, D.Va does pretty good at denying Farah value because Matrix does a lot and Farah can also die to D.Va if she doesn't have a pocket. And the last one is the hard counter here, which is the Iliari. So Iliari has the best of both worlds. She has the capability of shooting out of the sky. She doesn't have to scope. Her range is pretty decent, and she also has self-sustain, as well as the ability to consistently uh, rotate. So uh, this has maybe changed a little bit since the projectile size nerf, but Iliari is a huge, huge, huge deal when it comes to dealing with Farah, and it's one of the big reasons when aimed relatively well and positioned relatively well that Farah is not as popular in mid and high ranks. Sojourn, very dynamic character, a lot of mobility, a lot of range, really only deals uh, poorly with characters that completely outrange her, and she actually does fairly well in these matchups when she has a rail. So these are why these are not hard counters. You can absolutely out-snipe a Widowmaker when you have a rail, but you have to respect her when you don't. Same thing goes with Hanzo. Soldier is one of the characters that has a little bit of dynamics, um, which gives him some flexibility, but it doesn't mean that he struggles versus characters like Hanzo that do better up close when he has Storm Arrow and does better at far when he doesn't. So Hanzo is just going to beat you up close, going to beat you far away if he has those CDs. Ash is going to outrange you consistently, but you can beat if you outflank her. Um, same thing is going to go with Sojourn and uh, Widowmaker, although Sojourn with Rail can be really difficult to deal with. If she doesn't have Rail, you do pretty well versus her. And Widowmaker is something that you can get uh, up and close to and win, but if you can't get up close to a Widowmaker, it can be very hard to find value versus. Now, the other opposite extreme are the characters that are better flankers than you, Tracers, Sombras, and Balls. Characters that if you do try to take a lot of flanks and you get caught by one of these characters, they can quite easily kill you. So again, there's ways of counterplaying Soldier. You can play more sniper-oriented, more flanker-oriented, depending on the enemy composition, but these characters are going to make your lives difficult. Sombra. Uh, Sombra actually is pretty dynamic in Overwatch 2, uh, the most recent rework. There's not a lot of characters that can make her life difficult. Tracer, Kiriko are hard to win. They can shut down a lot of your ultimate value. They can also kill you rather quickly, and they can even spy check you, pull you out of stealth. Definitely that's the case with D.Va. Definitely uh, difficult to kill uh, consistent targets when D.Va's around. She's very good at spy checking you. The only reason I would put D.Va not in hard counter is that she is a tank that you can actually farm on the front line. So that's something that you can absolutely do. Manual hacks do a really good job on D.Va if she doesn't cancel them. So that's something that you can counterplay. But D.Va is pretty difficult to play into nonetheless. I think the only hard counter for Sombra is Torbjorn. He's very hard to consistently kill with overload. His turret is absolutely obnoxious. Um, and he really outranges you in medium, short, long. There's just no range that you can do better versus him. Now, he's a very easy kill if he doesn't have overload or his turret is mispositioned, so keep that one in mind. Symmetra's, again, one of those more dynamic characters where she has decent range. She has the mobility of her turret, which opens up some options. I think that she struggles versus characters that fly over her or really, truly are inaccessible. So, uh, Faro is one of those characters that she really can never reach. Hanzo is a character that she can reach, but who can cons- quickly and consistently one-shot her up and close. I think the ability that the fact that Hanzo doesn't have to scope in and still has Storm Arrow can make that 1v1 feel very scary for, uh, for, for Symmetra. And then there's characters that can virus her and ruin her day, such as Sombra. Um, obviously, that's more of a skill matchup. You can win the 1v1 as, as Symmetra. But the fact that EMP also shuts down your ultimate really, I think, puts us in the soft counter category. Doom Visit and Wrecking Ball can consistently find you and kill you. 
Um, they could chase you down very quickly with Teleporter. So Teleporter does a good job at denying Winston value, but doesn't do as good of a job at denying uh, Doomfist and Wrecking Ball value. Not to mention they can boop you and knock you out of your Teleporter, so you can't actually teleport back to safety. So these are good characters versus uh, Symmetra. Tormion. Now this one's funny, because Tormion is uh, one of the, the, the characters that people all pull, always pull out to counter other characters, but he is very easy to counter. Now you're probably wondering, well, then how is this character even played if he's so easy to counter? The problem is, and this should be a little bit of a commentary in Overwatch 2 Balance, is that easy characters have a lot of counters, but because they're easy, it's often harder for the counter to get value than it is for the Torbjorn. In other words, if I'm playing Torbjorn into, say, uh, let's say Cassidy, right? The Cassidy, in theory, has the advantage. The Cassidy has the advantage. I have a much fatter hitbox. He could do more consistent damage than me. I'm reliant on my overload to kill him um, as a Torbjorn. But... I can also just pray and close my eyes and hold down the button and maybe maybe I'll get value, right? Or maybe I just avoid him and shoot the enemy tank and, and place my turret in a really difficult spot. So to, I think Torbjorn has a lot of counters, but because he's relatively easy to play, there's ways of getting value uh, if, you're, if the, your counterparts don't play well. So Hanzo, not a character that you can really duel, can bust your turret down, can bust you. Same thing with Echo, same thing with Zenyatta, same thing with Far. It's really going to be a lot of the spammier characters are characters that could bust you and bust your turret down. You have one of the biggest hitboxes in the game. Um, there's really not a whole lot in here that can't break your turret consistently and bust you down. Um, I don't really think there's a lot of unique specialties here. Some tanks that can shut down your value. Nemesis form can do a great job. Uh, excuse me, Omnic form of breaking your turret and then breaking you. Um, same thing goes with Arisa. Diva can matrix your ultimate and then also kill you. Um, even the new micro missiles change makes it a little bit easier to break turret. May can very, very easily kill you with her icicles. Um, Kiriko can very, very easily kill you and kill your turret. So a lot of these characters are just very good at breaking turret consistently and then winning the 1v1 in medium ranges. Up close, Torbjorn's a little bit more scary, but yeah. Tracer, I think, is one of the high skill characters in the game. So there's a lot of things that are going to feel like hard counters that aren't, but maybe hard counters in lower ranks. So we'll go down that list. Um, we're going to talk about Iliari, who has the ability to pylon, who has the ability to two-shot you, body shot, uh, as of 2023. Uh, and so that's a huge, huge, huge deal. Uh, obviously, something in lower ranks that may not be as prevalent, but definitely in higher ranks and in even medium ranks, Iliar does a really good job of dealing with tracer value. You essentially have to go in, use your full clip, and then recall to get pylon, and then you still don't have an advantage in the 1v1 because you can two-tap you just with a body shot. Um, Kiriko can very easily kill tracer, deny her value, get away. Same thing with Baptiste. Very easy to put pressure on a tracer. Regenerative burst lamp are really good versus him. Turret makes Tracer's life miserable, and you can almost one-shot, headshot her. Uh, whip shot, Inspire, Bash, all these things make Tracer's life miserable. There's a lot of characters that can peel off a Tracer, even if they can't consistently kill her. Brigitte Lucio, a little bit of chip damage on a Tracer is really, really annoying. So there's a lot of value that could be had, not through necessarily killing the Tracer over and over again. Diva, Brig, Lucio can't consistently do that. Um, even the Bash, Bap can't consistently kill Tracer, but they do just enough chip damage or just enough peel value to really deny the value. And the fact that Tracer's harder to play makes it even so Widowmaker. So Widowmaker, I think, is a character that's very easy to counter with Sombra and Wrecking Ball characters that can easily quickly stage on her and kill her very quickly. Um, but map dependent, right? Map dependent. And these characters do have counterplays, ways of playing around them. Uh, and then if we go down the list, there's a couple of characters that can do similar things but can't do it quite as consistently. For example, Kiriko, Tracer, Doomfist, and Winston all can uh, headshot or dive with uh, Widowmaker but don't have the quite same level of uh, sustain and flanking. Uh, as the Sombra and Wrecking Ball, so they're not quite as consistently doing it. And then Hanzo is kind of a weird one, where Hanzo is not exactly, it's, I wouldn't call, definitely not call him a hard counter. It's more of a skill matchup, depends on the map, depends on the situation, but let's put it this way. Whenever they pick Hanzo, you're definitely paying attention to that as Widowmaker. Finally, we'll finish with some support. So Ana struggles with D.Va. I think the Sleep Dart and Nade being able to be eaten can be really, really tricky. You can matrix a lot of your damage, matrix a lot of your healing, and can, in theory, also dive you and kill you, so that can be pretty rough. I think Ana also struggles with Sombra and Tracer. All these are characters that you can definitely kill. They are definitely characters that have the advantage over you. Uh, they have more ways of dealing with your CDs than some of the other dive characters. Um, and they also can kill you if you make the mistake. So an equally skilled Tracer versus an equally skilled Ana, a Tracer is going to win that 1v1 most of the time. And the same thing goes with Sombra, as well as the fact that if they start to lose the 1v1, these guys also have the capability of disengaging and re-engaging when they have the advantage. Baptiste is a tricky one. I actually think Baptiste is really, really hard to counter. He's not always the best pick, which is why that he's not uh, the most powerful character in the history of the universe, um, but he's hard to counter pick. I think Doomfist can do a pretty good job versus him because he can consistently punch him out of his CDs, consistently re-engage, disengage, um, and because there's no CC from Baptiste, 
Uh, and even the ultimate can be difficult to outplay sometimes. I think Doomfist is a pretty good matchup versus uh, Baptiste. I think Wrecking Ball does a pretty good job versus Baptiste as well. Um, so keep that one in mind too. So I'm not sure why it's all the way over here. That's a mistake in my end. Um, but Brig, Brig does, uh, has a hard time versus spam characters that she can't reach or reliably 1v1. Uh, obviously, Farah Echo characters that you can't really reach. I think Ash as well, a character that you can't really reach. Now, Widowmaker, I guess, could fall into this category, but it's easier to avoid Widowmaker's spam, whereas Ash can be a little bit more aggressive. Bob, Dynamite can definitely make Brig's uh, life really, really difficult. I think Hanzo could maybe fall into that category too, but not quite as much. But then there's characters that just out-brawl her. Ryan... Uh, Junkrat, Bastion, Rambi, characters you don't really want to get close to. Um, and so the Shield Maiden character generally wants to beat on the, <laughs> the weak. Um, and if there's a character like a Ryan, Ram, or a Bastion, or even a Junkrat, you often have to be really, really careful uh, when, where you're getting your value. Iliari is hard to counter. Iliari is a situational counter where she can definitely be something that a Widowmaker um, can definitely make you think twice about peeking a sightline, um, but it's not something that is hard counter. You can kill a Widowmaker if the, if the stars align. Diva can deny a lot of your value, denies your ultimate, uh, and can spam you out, or, or can dive you, rather. Um, I think Sigma as well can, can deny your ultimate, uh, but most importantly can also just spam you out, shield off your value. Uh, and then really, Wrecking Ball is a character that can now easily, pretty easily break your pylon and dive you over and over again. And even if he can't consistently kill you, uh, you just don't do any significant damage to him because you don't have any CC, you don't have any burst damage. So it's actually really quite hard uh, to consistently kill Wrecking Ball as Iliari, and it's pretty easy for him to consistently harass and deny your value. Here we go. <laughs> no counters. Not always the best pick, but I don't think there are many characters that feel really, truly bad. I think initially here I had D.Va as being somebody that could eat your healing and eat your damage, and Farah as a character that you can't really interact with. But also Farah implies usually that there's a support in DPS that's isolated, which allows a Kiriku to take an angle and, and harass them, almost like a Tracer. Um, so I don't find Kiriku to be easy to counter at all. Life Hoover. Life Hoover, very, very frustrating character to play into, and I'm thankfully a character that is also pretty pretty easy to counter. Farah is a character that he can't really do much versus. Life Grip is pretty hard to, uh, to use versus a barrage. It's, Farah can kill people so quickly. Uh, even just from a damage boosted direct rocket, it's really hard to react to in time. And she can also really harass you, and you don't really have the hit scan projectile damage or even the mobility to consistently avoid it. Pedal is not going to do it. Um, characters that can snipe Life Hoover as well, uh, and that are difficult to get Life Grip value as well as Hanzo, uh, Farah, uh, Widow Makers, excuse me, and Ash fall into that category where they're quick kills um, and they can shoot you out quite easily and you don't really have the capability of dealing with them. Now, I will say sometimes Life Ever can poke these characters out. Keep in mind that you don't really have any fall off on your thorns and your spread is really tight for the first couple of thorns. So sometimes if you play at extreme ranges where fall off is a problem, you can deal with these characters okay, but it's a knee situation. Echo Falls in a Farah uh, category where it can be difficult to deal with as a life weaver, um, but not quite as bad as Farah. And then Iliari is a character that can, again, just poke you out. Not really a character that you can really interact with. Um, Life Grip can be definitely useful versus her ultimate, but that's about the only matchup, part of that matchup that's really consistently favorable to you. Lucio. Lucio, relatively good character, but also very, very hard to play and it's something that a lot of people can struggle to play with. Um, he's not as easy to get value out of, so that's the biggest problem with Lucio. He's actually not all that easy to counter. Cast can consistently shoot him. Hinder really messes him up. Um, even High Noon can catch a Lucio that's a little bit mispositioned. Uh, and then Sombra is pretty good at killing Lucio or at least threatening him. Uh, obviously, EMP doesn't cancel Sound Barrier anymore. It only takes a chunk of the HP down. But Sombra is one of the uh, better DPS versus a Lucio character. Lucio is one of those characters that's hard to counter, um, but is something that can be very difficult to get value out of. So counters isn't everything in Overwatch. Mercy dies very quickly to Sombra, uh, has more counterplay options versus Divas, Tracers, and Wrecking Balls, but those can all be very, very, very annoying to deal with nonetheless. GA is not consistent at getting away from those characters, and they have ways of also preventing your support passive from kicking in. Um, Summer is really the only one that should be consistently immediately killing you, um, but yeah. Moira. Moira is an interesting one where actually DPS Moira or the viability of DPS Moira is something that kind of factored into this decision because DPS Moira, at least at times, is definitely a really important playstyle in certain situations. And a lot of these characters do a really good job at denying that value. Hog is terrifying DPS. You don't do anything to him. can very quickly and consistently kill you. Um, can also even hook your ultimate. Uh, Torbjorn, it just totally ignores you. Turret's annoying to deal with. You can't break turret. He can poke you out. His overload dominates you. Even without overload, he's 
quite easy, has quite an easy job killing you. Um, Cassidy, Hanzo all have a very job, uh, have a pretty easy job killing you. Hanzo would be slightly different without Storm Bow, but Storm Arrow really ruins you. Um, Wrecking Ball totally ignores you and can harass and force your CDs quite easily. He can't consistently kill you, but he can force your fade and you can never kill him. And the same thing goes with Bastion, where Bastion basically just shrugs you off. So anything that you're not a viable threat to, but is a viable threat to you, uh, is a big problem with Moira. Zidiana. Now, I actually had a hard time putting hard counter on Sombra. Um, I think you could probably argue that Sombra is somewhere in between soft and hard counter. I just think that you do have to significantly change how you position versus the Sombra, and you do have to be on red alert. So even if you can counter play the Sombra, you obviously can. It does make your life difficult, and I think that falls into hard counter category. Um, Tracer as well can do a pretty good job assassinating you, although again, that 225 HP helps. Although the Discord nerf change definitely hurt because... If you discord a tracer too quickly and she ducks behind a corner, that puts you at a pretty big disadvantage in the 1v1 because you don't have your wall hacks anymore. Now, some of you might be surprised why Farah's in here. Um, I think Farah is okay versus Zenyatta um, just because that he's such a slow character that if you're able to get over him, um, that he's basically a hit scan speed character, but without the consistency of hit scan to threaten you. So maybe not exactly a soft counter, but I will say Zenyatta is one of the weaker supports when playing into pharmacy. So that about wraps this up. Uh, the key thing here is that while we talked a lot about counters, I actually hope that the opposite happens. I hope that this encourages you to swap less. Uh, I think that, that you can kind of get an idea that there are a lot of soft counters, there are a lot of hard counters here and there, um, but that there's a lot of room for counterplay. And if you're sticking with a rule of 3.5, you might find yourself to be swapping a little bit less. Now, I will say it's okay to swap when you know that you're just slamming your head into a wall. When you're tilted, you're frustrated, you don't understand the matchup, or you feel like there's way too many counters that are ruining the fun. Um, but there's a lot of room of counterplay with all of the soft counters and even with the hard counters as well. Um, obviously, the return on investment of swapping may be a little bit too high, uh, but I do think in the long run that people that learn how to counterplay are generally better than people that learn how to counterpick, especially in ranked. Um, please let me know if I miss any. Uh, was obviously a pretty big undertaking. Uh, I definitely may have missed some. So just I'll heart the comments and the uh, YouTube comments that I think point out good stuff. So if you think that, oh, this was actually a counter, or that's actually a counter, I will give your comments a read and I'll try to heart them to let you guys know that, oh yeah, good point. Keep an eye on that one. So if you're watching this video, check out the comments. You might get a couple of new things that I missed. But anyway, that's all I got. <laughs>